what is the process of someone to even become a sommelier? How do you go from, hey, I really like wine to, hey, I'm really nerding out about wine to let's be sommeliers? Like, what is that even? There's several different organizations. There's International Sommeliers Guild, okay. which has like classes, like you take classes on different regions of the world. We got ours through the quarter masters, which is really difficult. Um, and there is no school. There's no class for it. They assume that you have five or six years experience in the industry. And then you're in there with the master of sommeliers. And a master of sommelier is almost like a PhD in wine. And these are people that divided the entire life. I mean, like almost a photographic memory. So you start hanging around these people and you're learning from them. So you finally got a book the first day of class. That's the, your study book. And so blind tastings, the blind tasting is you don't know what the wine is. You take it through. They have a very distinctive way of tasting. So it's not easy, especially for the court. But um, yeah, it's, there's different levels. There's beginning, certified, advanced, and then master. And each one is tougher as you go through the, the yeah. ranks. So wow. like how long does it take for, for from beginning to end uh, to completion? Well, it, it depends on what your your goal is. Uh, for us, we and for myself, I just wanted to be at the first level because it was more gave me more credibility in the, mm -hmm. in the business. I, I had decided at that point I didn't want to work on as a floor som or or I was still teaching too. So mm -hmm. it was just like there was no way I was gonna be able to you know focus that much because it is really, really difficult. I mean, if you are going up through those ranks through the quartermasters, you are going to probably be, really involved in the industry in some capacity um, in a restaurant, in uh, national sales or something. Right. And uh, wor working, being in Las Vegas, we had access to, we had the most master sommeliers anywhere at that time here on the Las Vegas Strip. So they became our friends and mentors so that when we were studying, just even for the first level uh, with them, like we do like late night tastings with them. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was I was really like, wow, this is a big deal. Like I, even as a teacher and having to go through a lot of education courses, I'm like, this is yeah. really something. Yeah. And um, even going through the, the testing process, yeah. uh, I remember thinking, <clears throat> thank God I studied. I mean, I would study, <laughs> you know, in between my classes and I had flashcards mm -hmm. and uh, there's a lot to it. And, and it's kind of like the first level is, I call it like the wine 101, like when you take a 101 class, like you have to know so much general broad information about all the different regions of the world and new world and old world. And then you're in a huge ballroom at, we were at the Bellagio with the master psalms and they're, you know, you're doing these tastings and they're grilling you and drilling you. And then you take the test. That, I mean, that part of the test, then you take a written exam. Mm -hmm. Right. And then, it, you know, after all that said, they call your name and you go into a ballroom. If you get your name called, you go in and have a champagne. Yeah, when you come back the second day, half the class <laughs> is gone. Yeah, and half the class is wow, gone. Wow, wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. they gave up. They do. Yeah. I don't know. So, uh, yeah, it was, quite a, it was quite a feat, actually. And So, how did, let me... How did you guys survive? How did, how did you guys not become one of those that dropped out? What did, what, what did it take? Uh, it just took, I think it was because we had spent so much time right. really. In the industry into, already? In the industry. And I was selling wine at the time, so I was around these guys. So for me to fail, I would have been embarrassed. Like, really? Mm, okay. I, I was well, selling wine to these guys. The it's a funny story. You'll sure. love this story. So <laughs> I'm with these guys. I see these guys every day, you know, I'm selling wine. And, oh, Scott, you got this. You got this. No problem. I'm going through the book. Yeah, you're right. I got this. I got whatever. So good. Okay. The blind, we did really good at the blinds mm -hmm. tastings because actually he used to practice at um, Marche, Marche Bacchus right here at at Lakeside Village. Mm -hmm. So anyway, they're telling me, you got this guy. I was like, glance through this. Okay, I got it. I was more concerned with the tastings and getting the tastings right. So like she said, they're calling people. It's the last day. We're all exhausted. And they're calling people up. And I, fit, I did the written test. And I went outside. I've always taken tests fast. I go outside. I'm leaning against the wall like this. And she <laughs> goes, what? I go, I failed it. She goes, I do not feel sorry for you at all. <laughs> 
because I didn't really study. I, I figured I had it. These guys yeah, told me. I was, I, I was <clears> after him. <throat> like, like, I don't feel sorry study, for you. Like, really study. So I said, you know what? You go. <laughs> you go. You deserved it. Um, go to the champagne thing. I'll be at the Petrosian <laughs> bar drinking my sorrows away. So I go back in the room, recalling names and names and names. And literally, I was down in the end. I was almost was going to sneak out. All these guys are my friends. I was like, sneak out, like, oh, gosh, let me get out of here. And then all of a sudden, the last one, oh, Scott, Scott Harris. I looked at him, like, with an evil smile on their face. They kept putting my name to the back. And so I was, oh, no. I was mad because I was, like, ready to break down, you know. Yeah. And so I, mean, I did got to go into the champagne thing. And, yeah, but as soon as yeah. we got into that champagne tasting, Scott went up to... Robert the, Smith. Robert Smith. Master. Master sommelier at the time he had been, but he was at Picasso. And he, he looked right at Scott and he goes, I'm evil, aren't I? And he gave him this. As tears in my eyes. Yes, you are. As tears in my eyes. Yeah. Evil, all right. Yeah. So then I came home complaining, complaining, and she said, Scott, she goes, they would not have gone that effort if they didn't like you. And that's probably <laughs> true. <laughs> but still, I, I I like I kept looking for like a wink, wink, or a, I got you. Then nothing. They were like ice cold, man. These guys were ice cold. Yeah, they don't yeah. give you any. They got me. Yeah. So what? What's like an example of a really difficult question on this test? Like, what made you think that you thought you flunked the test? Like, what kind of questions are they asking? It was just to, for someone to flunk the sommelier test. It was a lot of it. I mean, I'm I'm really good. Thanks a lot. I'm really good at geography, you know, stuff like that. It was like regions, like, especially like, like Italy and Spain are very difficult regions because each little town okay. has their own little regions, whereas France is very, there's laws. There's like, this is Champagne to Champagne, Burgundy is Burgundy, but Italy and, and Spain are not like that. And I was getting confused, which was this, there and that area. Um, mm -hmm. So I really didn't, again, I didn't study that person. I, I was more concerned with this, with the tasting, they get it tasted right, which we both blew them away, the blind tastings. But I was more concerned with that and the service aspect than actually doing the book knowledge, which these guys told me I had. So Makes sense. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Well, that's a beautiful story. <laughs> when we come back, I want to get into more about uh, how does one take on a career like okay. you guys? How does one get into the field? 